Yeah. Uh, this is uh, another literature uh, class. Um, this one this week is about descriptive literature. We're going to get very descriptive and start describing lots of things and reading about descriptions. Let's have a look at the PowerPoint. So hopefully you can see that now. Uh, descriptive literature. Okay, so let's start. Hope you're ready. Right, there are three sentences here on the screen, A, B, and C. Which one do you prefer and why? Tell your partner and pause the screen for a couple of minutes. Okay, so which do you prefer? You probably prefer number three, number C. A B is better than A, but C is better than B, yeah? It's much more descriptive. Um, there are a lot more adjectives. It's describing what happened, where, how. Um, it's giving us a lot more information. So here, this is the basic sentence in A. Basically what's happening, just a leaf fell off a tree. And then there are two descriptive adjectives added in B yellow and big and then there's an onomatopoeia in C. The onomatopoeia is swoosh because it sounds like the word that it means. Swoosh! It's describing the movement of the leaf. The sound word and the image. It's added more adjectives as well. The smooth yellow leaf. Um, and the verb has been changed to more descriptive, floated down. And the enormous oak tree, specific kind of tree, oak, and the size. So C is a lot better. And this shows us how description works and how you can build up from basic sentences to really beautiful descriptive sentences. Okay. So, uh, lots of people say that using the five senses is the best way to incorporate descriptive writing. So the five senses are sight, smell, hearing, taste, and touch. If we describe these, that means the reader can imagine them, all the different senses, and understand the writing more. It might be difficult to use all of them at once, but just using a few will make the reading better and will get you more involved in what you're reading. When you read, do you like imagining the sight, the smell, the hearing, the taste, the touch? You can talk to your partner now about these five senses, which, which are the best to incorporate in descriptive writing and why. Okay, you ready? Okay, so here are some adjectives um, and I want you to categorize them into the correct sense. So we have the five senses on the left, sight, smell, hearing, taste, and touch. And we have lots of adjectives on the right. Let's do a few together. So bright, where can we put bright? Bright must be something to do with sight, mustn't it? Bright. So you can match bright to sight. What about sugary? So sugary will probably be taste, the taste of sugar. So match sugary to taste. Okay, can you pause the screen and match all those adjectives? If you need to look them up in dictionaries or explain to each other, that's fine. So pause now and match. Okay, are you ready? So let's go through them. Uh, bright is sight, 
dark sight, noisy and quiet are hearing, sugary and sweet are taste, fluffy is touch, bumpy is touch, going up and down a bumpy road, colourful is sight, stinky is smell, stinky smells, crackling is hearing like the crackling of a fire, crunchy is, um, could be touch, crunchy, something you're walking on or taste, crunchy, splashing is touch, you splash in the puddle and the water splashes over you, Juicy is taste, juicy fruit. Sour is taste. Creamy could be taste or touch. Sticky is touch, something that sticks. Dry is touch. Rough and smooth are both touch. Smoky, a smell, smells like a fire, smoky. Barking is hearing, like a dog. Skinny is sight, maybe. Shiny is sight and spicy is taste. Did you get them all correct? Well done. Try and use some of these adjectives later in your descriptions. Okay. I want you to write a description now. Write a description of chicote using all the five senses. Okay, you have 10 minutes. I want you to pause the video and I'll put it back on the screen before this one so you can see some of these adjectives and remind you of the five um, categories. Okay, so write your description. Pause now, 10 minutes. Okay. Okay. What were your descriptions like? Did you incorporate all five senses? It's quite difficult, but it's good practice to use all the five. If you want to put any of those, take pictures of them, for example, and put them in the WhatsApp group, that's a good idea. Okay, so on now to different literary devices. We've looked at some of these before, um, metaphor and simile. And we've got some others there. Do you know these? Onomatopoeia, oxymoron, parallelism, and personification. I want you to pause the video and try to match with what you think might be the paragraph to exemplify them. So these are examples to match. So pause for maybe five or 10 minutes. Try to match the letters with the numbers. You can, of course, use dictionaries and your phone to look up the meanings. Okay, start now. Okay. So, have you got the answers? If you haven't, you need to pause for longer. Okay, ready? I'm gonna show you the answers now. So metaphor and simile are number two. They're comparing things. Simile is when you say like and or as, and metaphor is when you're comparing, but you don't say like or as. And onomatopoeia is like that swoosh word of the leaves in the first slide. It's when the word imitates the sound. An oxymoron, that's interesting. It's when you have two things that seem like they are opposites, but we put them together. Like these examples, a thunderous silence, deep vapidity, a sharp-witted fool, Okay, it's the opposite, and that is quite poetic. Parallelism is often where you repeat the same structure. And the example here of um, Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream, 
I have a dream, I have a dream. He repeats it and it's a very strong um, persuasive way of making a speech. And then personification, the final one is number three. And this is giving an uh, animal human qualities. So for example, making uh, a dog talk. Lots of these um, in children's stories, for example, um, in Disney films. We're going to look at more examples of these later and to use more of them, remember them for now. This is another way of um, analyzing a descriptive text. Here is a description in literature of four paragraphs. And there are four words at the top describing the order of the paragraphs. Now, the paragraphs are in the right order, but the four black words are not. Can you match each word to one paragraph to put the four black words in the correct order according to the text. You need to pause now for five minutes or so to read and match the words, okay? Okay, did you get the right word for each paragraph? The first paragraph is contextualizing. So often at the beginning, we have to set the context. Where is it? Why am I talking about this? So the first on the Sunday paragraph is contextualizing. The second one is the event. It's about the, the cat crossing the garden. The third one is the analogy. He's widening it out to talk about something much bigger. The whole world is in the pond by my feet, widening out with analogy. And then the conclusion at the end. So that's quite a nice way of writing a description. Contextualizing, event, analogy, conclusion. Okay. I want you to look at the same text again now and see how many adjectives you can find and how many of the five senses are described and is there any imagery so we're starting to analyze the text now okay so pause the video and analyze this text three questions at the top pause now Okay, so how many adjectives did you find? There are many. So let's have a look. Um, the garden is narrow, long, green, lawn chair, small, peaceful, gentle. Okay, there are just the ones in the first paragraph. How many of the five senses? Now, most of them are sight aren't they? Is there anything else? There was barking um, for the um, sound. Anything else apart from sound and sight? And any imagery? Now we have that analogy, the whose whole world is the pond by my feet, as if for the first time. Okay. A nice description there of somebody in their peaceful garden. Here's another text. I want you to practice analysing this. So in pairs, I want you to read it and then describe, then look at the adjectives and look at the senses and see if there's any of those um, any of those literary devices like metaphor, simile, onomatopoeia, oxymoron, personalization, or personification. 
have a look now. Okay. Okay, so I hope you noticed the adjectives of sight to describe it. Um, the senses, my stomach was roaring. That's a good image. Your stomach roaring like a lion because it was so hungry. Further down, we have some the sense of smell, the um, garlicky smell emanating from the box. Okay, um, lots of images there, relaxation gone in a flash. And it's just about a guy getting a pizza in the night when he was hungry. A very simple description, but very descriptive because of the feelings described, the adjectives and the literary devices. Okay, next. I want you to write some more. Um, I want you to choose one of these, choose one person or one object or one place. It can be um, the market in Bissau, for example, or your home village, for example, or a famous person in Bissau, or something from your pocket. I want you to describe one of these things just in 10 minutes and try to use at least three of those literary devices. A simile, when you're comparing with like, a metaphor, when you're comparing, but you don't use like, an onomatopoeia that sounds like the word itself, oxymoron with the two contrasting words, Parallelism, when you're repeating the same structure, or personification, when you make a, a non-person into a person. Okay, pause now and write your description. And then you can compare them and read each other's. Okay, what did you think about everybody's descriptions. Are you appealing to the senses more now, the five senses? Can you use some of these literary devices now to add to your writing? Does it make the writing better? Does it make it better when you're reading the description? Okay, we have a little bit more practice now. You know those, um, 50 short love stories from Africa I gave you last week to read. I'd like you to have a look at that. Um, you should be able to open it on your phones from the PDF I sent. Choose one of the stories and in pairs, analyze the description in the stories. Does it appeal to all the five senses? Are there any Similes, metaphors, oxymorons, onomatopoeias, personification or parallelism. And then I want you to present your findings with examples to another pair. So this will probably take about 20 minutes. I want you to pause the screen while you do that. Okay. Okay. How is that? It's a good way to analyze different short stories, isn't it? And it's good to work in pairs to work together and help each other. More fun too. Okay, your homework is to continue to read the African short stories, the two books, PDFs I gave you last week and think about the descriptions. And if you can post some comments or examples in the literature WhatsApp group. Okay, thanks very much. That's it for today and I'll see you soon.